Hey, boys and girls, I'm, I'm Julie MacArthur, and I'm going to read chapter 40. Hear, hear ye, hear ye. Lucas couldn't wait for Clara and her mother to arrive at the palace, so he didn't. He snuck out and raced all the way to the bakery. Clara always went to the bakery after school. Her father, Owen Gills, worked there. Lucas peeked down the lane. The school children are coming, he thought. He didn't want them to see him, so he pressed himself against the wall alongside the bakery. Then he listened to what they were saying. Why on earth would the prince want to go to the school with us? Asked a boy named Alban. Maybe he's one Clara said. I feel, feel sorry for him, cooped up in the castle all day. The children laughed at Clara. How can you feel sorry for the prince? Asked a girl named Martha. The prince has everything, said another girl named Ashley. Not everything, said Clara. He doesn't have a single friend. He's not even allowed to play with me when I visit the palace with my mother. Well, I'd trade places with him any day, said Alvin. I'd love to live like a prince. I know it sounds like the perfect life, said Clara, but a palace, fine clothes, delicious food aren't everything. Bells jingled as the children stepped into the bakery. Moments later, each child carried a roll of warm butternut bread to the bench outside. Lucas, Lucas's mouth watered. How he wished he could join them. As he waited, he heard horses whinny. Then someone began to shout, Hear ye, hear ye, he cried. The queen of Renly has lost her prized emerald stone. The king has offered a grand reward to anybody who finds it. The villagers began to hurry to spread about the news. Oh no, Luke thought Lucas, I must get back to the palace. Lucas left his hiding place and ran all the way home, being careful to stay in the shadows.